Hello, and welcome to episode 7 of Sir Astro's Kingdom Death Monster painting series. In this episode, I'll be painting the hand for Madame Poot's Kingdom Death Monster. As usual, I've taken inspiration for some of the main colours from the character art, notably the yellow cloak and golden yellow armour. I've then aimed to achieve some harmony by using tones from the complementary blue-violet to red-violet range elsewhere on the miniature. As with the other monsters in the game, I've used some slate for the basing and I've primed the figure in black followed with some zenithal highlights, and you can refer back to episode 2 for more details on this process. I'll then be applying my base colours along with a little shade for some of the more textured areas. And as usual I'll be spending the most time working on the highlights, where I'll be aiming for quite a bright non-metallic metal gold effect and one or two optional finishing touches. Let's begin with the base colours. I'm going to begin by sketching in the tones for the base using a free mix of dark sea blue, black, German camo dark brown and ivory. I'm working quite loosely and doing a little wet blending along the way. I'm also using some more ochre tones for the skulls on the ground. I'll be returning to refine the base later on. Next I'm going to paint the cloak using scale colours Sahara Yellow, darkened down with some violet. and I've decided to go a little darker still for the inside of the cloak. I've also chosen to begin defining the main shadows with this. Here I'm just mixing in a little black for the deeper recesses. Next I'm painting the fabric on the arms and legs using black leather. This is quite a purplish tone which nicely complements the yellows. For the areas of fur I've chosen brown grey and I'll be blending in a little birch for the raised areas around the neck. I'm now switching to the birch. Next I'm mixing some Vallejo's Oxford Blue into some black and I'm using this to paint the areas of metalwork that I'd like to appear more silver to help break things up a bit. I've decided to use this for the little hands on the boots as well as the main piece of the chest armour and the sides of the helmet. And for the areas of gold, I'm using Japanese uniform, darkened with some German camo dark brown.
Here I'm just returning to the Oxford Blue and Black mix. And I'm also using the gold bass tone for the skull on the sword handle, as well as the tip of the scabbard. For the exposed brain, I'm using a mix of scale colours violet, sunset purple, and maybe a little black to control the saturation. I'm now using a mix of deep red and red leather for the decorative flaps and belts. And I'm using the same yellow tone for the rims that I used for the cloak. Next I'm returning to the gold base colour to paint the small remaining metallic details. For the small glowing bottle, I'm just providing a pure white undercoat for now. Next I'm painting the bony handle of the sword using Gobi Brown, although you could also use the same base colour we mixed for the gold if you like. And for the small area of skin, I'm using Vallejo's Malefic Flesh. Finally for the base colours, I've chosen to use black leather for the scabbard. Next I'm creating a shade using a roughly 3 to 1 mix of Agrax Earthshade and Drukii Violet, thinned down with some Lamian Medium. And I'm using this to shade all of the areas of fur, along with the brain and some of the more textured parts of the armour. And finally, I'm adding a little black lining to aid definition. We're now ready to begin adding the highlights. I'm going to begin by highlighting the brain, and I'm freely adding some fuchsia, white, and some tanera yellow to do this. I'm pushing the highlights pretty far, as this is quite an unusual feature that I'd like to stand out. Mm -hmm. 
Next I'm highlighting the reddish elements with the addition of some fuchsia and some Tenera yellow. I'm boosting the highlights most strongly here near the glowing bottle. For the areas of black leather, I'm creating some highlights with the addition of some white sands and some violet. Here I'm adding some black to boost the depth of the shadows. And I'm adding some Tenera yellow for the brightest highlights. Here I'm just brushing a thin layer of Marduk yellow over the glowing bottle. You could use whatever bright yellow you like for this. For the small areas of silver metalwork, I'm simply lightening the base tone with some white and some ivory. I'm doing quite a bit of stippling here, especially where there's not much room to operate. I'm now adding the ivory as I'd like a little warmth in the brighter highlights. I've chosen to pick out this small design at the top of the chest using the same colours I used for the brain. I'm now moving on to the areas of gold where I'll first be highlighting up to pure Japanese uniform, then to light yellow and ivory. Here I'm just using the side of the brush tip to help catch some of these raised details. 
This is now pure Japanese uniform. I'm also using a darker mix to help define some of the shadows. I'm now adding the light yellow and I'm going to focus firstly on the left pauldron to check that I'm happy with my approach. This is now pure light yellow and I'm keeping the highlights quite tightly focused. You can see I'm also adding one or two specular glints along the way. Finally I'm adding my ivory for the smallest highlights. Learning to pace ourselves when building up high contrast highlights like this can take a little practice. I'm now moving around the rest of the figure in the same way. One of the main things I want to achieve with the figure is to balance the need to make each element distinct and readable whilst maintaining an overall sense of harmony and avoid the temptation to include too many disparate colours which can be tempting with quite a busy sculpt like this. You might notice that I'm occasionally swapping brushes as I quite like the Redgrass Games size 20 brush when stippling on fine details. We can also incorporate some small touches of colour from the nearby elements to help add interest and create a more reflective look.
These are my last few highlights. I'm now going to highlight the cloak by progressing up to pure Sahara yellow from the yellow and violet base tone. I'm also highlighting the small yellow trims on the front. This is now pure Sahara yellow. I'm now adding some Tenera yellow to achieve my brightest highlights. Next I'm highlighting the sword handle, mainly with the addition of some birch. And here I'm just using some Agrax Earthshade to tone things down and bring back a little depth in the recesses. I'm now providing a quick highlight to the left hand with the addition of some pale flesh. Next I'm picking out a couple of highlights on the fur using birch. And I'm switching to Tenera yellow to add a little object source lighting to the raised details surrounding the bottle. Because I felt the cloak was a little plain, I've chosen to add a small design to the lower edge using black leather. I also went back and forth a bit with the level of dusty weathering. I'm now doing a little refining of the base, sharpening a few of the highlights and also boosting the depth of the shadows with some Nolan Oil and Rukii Violet. And I'm now adding a final couple of highlights. And this completes the hand. Thank you for watching, I hope you have enjoyed the episode. As always you'll find full details of the products used in the video description, along with links to all of the places I can be found on social media and Spotify. My sincerest thanks as always go to my kind patrons for funding this series. I simply couldn't do this without them.
Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Kingdom Death Monster. Happy painting!